So, guys, after three years in early access, the Day of Defeat-inspired indie shooter, Days of War, has finally been released. But the question is, though, has the wait been worth it, and is it actually worth buying? Well, guys, this is Billy Eat Worlds, and let's find out. All right, guys, how you going? And welcome to the video. And just to get started, I just kind of want to bring you up to speed with what this game is and how it got to where it is right now. Because a couple of weeks ago when the dev sent me through a review key for the game, honestly, I hadn't even really heard of it before and so I didn't give it much attention. But look, a few of you guys commented on some of my recent videos and you asked me to check it out and I thought, look, why not? It's a World War II shooter and that's what we're here to do, right? And I was still thinking, well, this is a new game, right? But apparently it's actually not. Like I said, it's been in development for over three years now. Now, look, I'm not super deep with the history of this game, but as far as I know, it all started back in 2016 as a Kickstarter project developed by a relatively unknown studio called Driven Arts. And it was actually initially put into early access in 2017, which may have been a bit premature considering the devs pulled it later from the Steam store. Fast forward two years to November 2019, and the game was put into early access yet again under a new publisher this time called Graffiti Games. And like I said, this is where I'm jumping into the game. So let's see now that it's supposedly finished if all of that extra work was actually worth it. So the question is then, what exactly is Days of War? And well, like I said, it's another modern take on Day of Defeat which, if you're not already familiar with, was a legendary close-quarters World War II shooter that started out originally as a mod for Half-Life 2 way back in 2003. Now, not just that, but you might also be thinking that on the surface, this one kind of looks like old-school COD and, by extension, also games like Battalion 1944. Which I guess is kind of true, I mean its gameplay can feel a bit similar, and it's got super close quarters predictable maps, but it's also doing its own unique thing as well. For example, like old school COD, it is pretty fast paced, but there's a stamina mechanic, so you're not going to be able to sprint everywhere all the time. And unlike Battalion 1944, this one isn't trying to be a complete nostalgia trip. You can actually aim down sights, and there's also a progression system with different weapons you can unlock as well. Also, I should mention the time to kill is pretty fast, and the recall model is pretty tough as well, and you kind of get the impression the devs were trying to make this on the edge of being a hardcore shooter. But on the other hand, the hipfire accuracy is insanely good as well. So I don't know. It just kind of feels like this weird mix between an arcade shooter and something like, for example, Day of Infamy. So all in all, look, if that's all we had to talk about, I'd say if you're a fan of CQB shooters or just World War II shooters in general, then definitely this might be worth giving a go. But rarely can we just stop a review at that point. You know, every game these days has got some sort of baggage, and well, this one is no exception. For a start, like I said, it is very similar to Battalion 1944, a game which also had a rocky start, and a game which I still personally think is a pretty damn good game. But if you look at the player numbers for that one, you'll see people just aren't interested. And well, I'm kind of worried that Days of War might have the same problem in the long run as well. For example, I jumped on today peak time in Australia, which admittedly is not peak time in the US, only a day or two after launch, and there was only like three populated servers in the entire world. And one fortunately was in Australia, but it was only half full, and by about three or four matches, it was completely dead. And look, just like in Battalion 1944, the game will fill in the empty slots with bots, but obviously that's not going to be the same experience. And also, I should mention that unlike Battalion, which is either 5v5 or 8v8 usually, this one is 16 versus 16, which is obviously going to make it a lot harder to keep those servers full. 
So, look, to finish up, at the end of the day, this isn't a bad game. I mean, it's pretty smooth and it looks pretty decent compared to a lot of indie shooters. But I've got to admit, it's also not perfect as well. For example, it's got some weapon balance issues and it's also probably got some net coding problems that I could see that need to be probably addressed as well. And look, I know that sort of thing is pretty common in just about every game these days, including AAA shooters, but the point I'm trying to make is that it would be different if this game was really stellar from launch, because ultimately it's an online multiplayer shooter, so in other words, it's only ever going to succeed if it can generate enough hype to stay afloat. So that's probably the hardest thing about making this review. I want to tell you about all the cool things in this game, like the progression system or the map editor, but that's not ultimately what you guys need to know. What you guys want to know is that this could be a dead game in just a few months. And look, if you invest any money into it right now, there's a good chance you probably might not get what you might think would be your money's worth. However, what I will say is that if you do want to try it out, you definitely should buy it right now, not only because you want to get in before those player numbers start to drop off, but also because it's currently on sale. But look, if you don't want to take the risk, I can completely understand that. You might want to wait for a free week to roll around because look, stranger things have happened. Indie shooters turn it around all the time and maybe a free week or two will be all this game needs to finally be a cult classic. But anyway, guys, that just about wraps up this quick review. So as always, please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And look, if you're a veteran of Day of Defeat or Day of Infamy or even Battalion 1944, please let me know what you think, especially in the comments, because I want to know what you think compared to those other games. That'd be really interesting to read. As always, though, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and please feel free to check out the links in the description if you want to see any more of these videos. And don't forget to check out my Twitter and Discord links down there as well if you want to keep in touch. And as always, until next time, see you later, and have a good one.